7 Best ETFs to Buy Now But before we start, please support us by pressing like and subscribe buttons, also turn on the bell notification to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. These top ETFs can help smooth things out in a bumpy market. The S&P 500 started this month with a year-to-date loss of 27% after its worst September since 2002. And as we look to the end of the year, many investors are worried that bigger declines could be looming as talk about a recession becomes increasingly more common. If you're stuck in the same stocks and exchange-traded funds, or ETFs, from a few years ago, this year has taken a large toll on your portfolio. And if you haven't changed course yet, it may be worth considering the following 7 ETFs as a way to get defensive and protect yourself against further declines in the months ahead. 1. Invesco S&P 500 GARP ETF, ticker, SPGP. This $1 billion Invesco ETF offers a way to focus on blue chips with GARP characteristics, that is, growth at a reasonable price. The idea is to invest only in growth stocks that have attractive valuations, rather than chase high-flying stocks that offer more risk and are already priced for perfection. The SPGP fund comprises just 75 holdings, which are S&P 500 components like Regeneron Pharmaceuticals Inc., REGN, and Agricultural Chemicals Giant CF Industries Holdings Inc., CF, instead of the usual suspects among large-cap tech stocks. In fact, the top two sectors are financials and healthcare, with technology at just 15% of the portfolio. This measured approach to growth allows upside if and when the market calms down, but has helped SPGP weather the downturn with just 16.9% declines year to date through October 4, solidly outperforming the S&P 500. 2. Invesco S&P 500 Low Volatility ETF, SPLV Another defensive strategy that could be attractive to investors looking beyond the typical S&P 500 index funds is to seek out stocks that move slower and with less volatility than their peers. In a raging bull market this means missing out on the big moves higher, but in a market like this one it may be wise to bet on companies of this kind. SPLV is a $10 billion fund comprising the 100 stocks that exhibit the lowest realized volatility over the past 12 months among all S&P 500 components. Perhaps unsurprisingly, that means about 26% of assets are in reliable utility stocks and another 20% or so are in consumer staples. In a go-go market these kinds of companies won't keep up with small-cap software firms, but in 2022 they are hanging tough. 3. iShares Select Dividend ETF, DVY Another way to keep exposure to large-cap stocks but take a slightly more defensive approach is to bias your portfolio toward dividend stocks. After all, companies have to have substantial profits and stable operations to schedule consistent payments to shareholders. And even if the shares themselves take a hit, the dividend payments help soften the blow. The iShares Select Dividend ETF boasts a diverse portfolio of 100 stocks that have paid dividends for at least the past five years, including companies like tobacco giant Altria Group Inc., MO, and big oil icon ExxonMobil Corporation, XOM. Thanks to the rock-solid nature of stocks like these, through October 4 DVY has fallen just 5% so far in 2022, proving it has staying power in a rough market. Four. Consumer Staples Select Sector SPDR ETF, XLP If you're worried that any of these prior funds is letting the fox in the henhouse with some risky large-cap tech stocks or overpriced energy companies that could roll over if and when oil prices decline, then you may want to rely solely on consumer staple stocks to take shelter from this stormy market. At $15 billion, XLP is the largest and most liquid way to play this sector, and with declines of just 9% through early October, it has delivered less than half the losses of the typical large-cap fund. Top stocks include boring but reliable companies like Procter & Gamble Company PG, and Coca-Cola Company KO, firms that are sure to be around for many years regardless of what happens in the coming months. 
5. SPDR Gold Shares, GLD The $50 billion GLD fund is the leading way to play gold in an exchange-traded product rather than buying actual bullion, so if you want a safe haven without the hassle of physical gold bars or coins, this is it. One of the few assets that moved higher in an admittedly brutal September, gold is a store of value that has seen investors through many rough spots in market history. In the long run it's never wise to have too much in gold, since the precious metal relies on inflationary pressures and macroeconomic uncertainty to rise in price rather than any fundamental growth characteristics. But it's undoubtedly been a smart move to stash some cash in gold this year. GLD is down just 7% in 2022 through October 4, a fraction of the mayhem we've seen for stocks. 6. The iShares 1-3 to Year Treasury Bond ETF, SHI Bonds are generally more stable than stocks. However, with a rising interest rate environment bond funds have taken it on the chin this year too. Case in point, the iShares 20 plus year Treasury Bond ETF, TLT, that invests in long-term government bonds has dropped almost exactly the same amount in 2022 as the S&P 500. The inverse relationship between bond values and yields means the principal value of these assets declines as rates go up, after all, why would you want a treasury bond from 3 years ago that pays 1.5% when you can get one issued last month that yields 3.5%. The exception to this comes in short-term bond funds like SHI, however, which has almost $30 billion under management. Bonds in this roll off quickly in just a few years before losing too much value, insulating shy from these risks. You get less yield in this fund, but with a decline of just under 5% so far this year, it's proven a much wiser investment than long-dated bond funds that have plunged five times that amount. 7. Cambria Tail Risk ETF, Tail this quirky fund from boutique ETF provider Cambria is not so much an investment as an insurance policy. The $500 million tail fund is focused on mitigating tail risk events that aren't very common but can cause incredible disruptions to your portfolio when they do happen, which, in 2022, sounds like a strategy worth considering. Tail managers do this by investing in out-of-the-money options that are cheap to take on, but unlikely to be profitable if the market stays stable or moves steadily higher. In a bull market this strategy doesn't do anything, but like car insurance or health insurance it will help you recoup your losses in the event of an unexpected problem. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.